Hey guys, tea is a large part of Chinese culture and I remember when I was young, whenever we went hiking or traveling, my grandparents would carry a simple tea set with them so this way whenever we take a break, uh, we can enjoy tea on the go. Even in mundane places like an auto shop, I used to remember seeing owners just leave out traditional tea sets just so that guests can prepare tea for themselves while waiting. And for me at home, the preferred method of preparing tea is with the traditional Chinese tea set as it enhances and really just bring out the origin of the tea leaves. And a lot of times when I have guests over, they often ask about the parts of the traditional tea set and of course, uh, how to use them. So in this episode, I'm going to go over different parts of the tea set and how to brew tea with them. So a lot of people view a traditional Chinese tea set as more of a ceremonial thing and are often intimidated by using them. While this may be true, a lot of people in China does go through a lengthy training process on the techniques as well as art and literature behind Chinese culture in order to become a tea artist. But you can also just enjoy tea prepared in this way on a very casual level at home. And to get the question out of the way, no, I am not traditionally trained. In this video, I'm simply sharing the way that my family enjoys tea at home using this tea set. As I said in the beginning, the traditional tea set is definitely the way that I will recommend you guys enjoy tea at home, especially if you have high quality teas. And teas prepared in this method, we often refer to as tasting tea rather than drinking tea because you're actually taking the time to enjoy the tea that you're having. Now, of course, if we are in a rush or we just want to have some tea to quench our thirst, we also prepare tea in this simple pitcher, which I can make a video on in the future. So before we get to brewing, I first want to explain the different parts of a traditional tea set. Set. On a traditional tea set, there is going to be a tray or a tea setting. Now, this might come in a couple of different formats, but they all essentially do the same thing. They will have some kind of container to hold the water underneath, or if you have a more permanent setting, which is something that looks like this, which is much bigger. So they will actually have a little hole here for you to connect a spout and often people will just lead the spout into a bucket underneath the coffee or tea table. And this way you can just have this permanently set up on your desk and whenever people come over to have tea, you will simply prepare on this and dump the bucket as it gets full. Now for us, we don't really have a space to have a permanent large setup like that. So the last time that I went back to China, I found this method that I really, really like which essentially allowed the liquid to fall beneath this plate on top and just be stored on the container on the bottom of this tea tray. The next part of the tea set are these two mugs. Now in my particular set, these two actually look very identical. One of them is actually the tea holding pot. The other one is what they call an infuser pot or a fair pot. In this particular pot is actually where the tea leaf goes and where the actual infusion happens. Now in some sets, this pot might actually come in the form of an actual pot. So the version that you see might vary. The next unusual item that might come in a traditional tea set is actually this little figure in here. This is actually called a tea pet. Now the one that I have is actually in the form of a lion. I really like this little guy a lot. Next, we have a strainer. This is to be placed on top of the tea holding pot. So this way, when you're pouring out the tea from the infusion pot, it will strain out any loose tea that happens to escape. And in my set, it comes with a little stand for the strainers to set on. Next is your actual teacups. Now they are often very small in size. This has to do with the tasting aspect that we discussed earlier. At this point, I do want to point out that the tea sets are often made in two material, a clay version that you see here and also a ceramic version. Now which set is better really comes down to your personal preference. The ceramic ones usually have a thinner lip on the cup, so some people prefer that. However, I prefer the more of a like earthy traditional look and that's why I chose the set. Now there are two things that I don't use very often. One is actually a tea leaf holder, which actually came with this set. The reason why I don't use this that often is because I usually use an airtight container or a lot of teas that I have are pre-packeted into little airtight packets, which I'm gonna show you guys later. And the other thing is a brush for the tea. In a traditional ceremony, very often after you are done with one setting of tea, you'll simply clean out with the brush and set it on a little brush holder. Let me show you guys here. Um, I have a little monk as the 
uh, the brush holder. This again came with the set. Now at home, I don't use the brush that often because I simply take the pot over to the sink and I rinse it out. Again, chances are if you are purchasing a set, it will very likely come with a brush and that is what the brush is for. There's two more things in the traditional tea setting that I don't normally use. Is one, often people have a large pot to place all the teacups in and the pot will be filled with boiling hot water and that is a way for people to clean and disinfect their cups. Now related to that, very often you'll also see a little tongue just because the cups will be very hot as they come out of the water bath so this way it will make the cups and of course it's also there for sanitary reasons so this way the host wouldn't be handling the guests cups. And of course, if you don't have that little tongue, or if you're like me, my set did not come with the tongue, you'll simply have to be very careful handling these cups as they are very, very hot. Now, as I get into the actual brewing part, first I want to mention the three fundamental steps of enjoying Chinese tea. The first step is actually the examination and sniffing of the tea leaves. As you're removing tea from its container or its packet, you will sniff the tea to examine its scent and examine the tea leaves to appreciate its craftsmanship. And this part is especially important for high quality tea as you will be able to really tell a difference just by looking and sniffing the tea itself. And the second part is smelling the aroma of that first brew. The first brew is often a brew that we do not drink. We simply smell it to enjoy its first burst of aroma and we will throw it out after. The final part is of course enjoying that first sip. All right, hopefully you guys now have a better understanding of the different parts of a traditional tea set. Now let's brew a pot and actually go through the steps. Now when it comes to actual brewing temperature, the general rule of thumb is darker the tea, the hotter the water needs to be. Now on the lighter side, for the white and green teas, you want to be around 172 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. For black teas, you want to be around 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for oolongs, it's very tricky because sometimes a oolong tea is closer to a green tea, now sometimes it's closer to a black tea. So the range for brewing oolong tea is going to be much bigger, at 185 to as high as 212, which is pretty much just boiling. Now lastly, we have a tea that's very often seen in dim sums, which is the pu'er. And this tea is very interesting because very often it comes in a little brick shape. Now one very interesting thing I want to point out about the pu'er in particular is that very often the older the tea, the more valuable it is. And for that, you definitely want to be right off boil which is around 212 Fahrenheit and of course nowadays we have very convenient tools like a teapot that's able to hold its temperature and as I was growing up of course we never had these things so what we did was for white and green tea we simply waited a minute or two before introducing the water to the tea leaves and for the black teas we waited a couple seconds and of course as I mentioned for the pour you will simply introduce water immediately after it's boiled now the tea that we are brewing today is actually my favorite tea which is called the Tia Guang Ying and this tea comes from the Fujian province in China a high quality the Tie Guang Ying will go up to about $3,000 USD per kilogram. And the Tie Guang Ying is considered a oolong tea, but it's more often considered to be in between a green and a black tea. I know the temperature for the Tie Guang Ying is going to be around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, if you're purchasing tea from tea dealers, just ask them what is the best temperature to brew these teas at. I've already went ahead and boiled the water and have it held at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, usually the next step is to disinfect your cups. Now again, if you're sharing the cups, you might have these cups inside a hot water bath but in my case I'm just having them lay out here and what I do is I take some water and I just simply pour, pour over them to sort of clean them out a little bit and of course to bring the temperature of the cups up. This is where the little holding tank on the bottom comes in handy because you will simply pour out the water straight onto the tea setting. Next, you will simply transfer the tea to your tea infuser and in today's video I'm going to be using a very commonly seen tea packet that we get in China. And again, as I mentioned before, this tea packet has been airtight sealed and it's been pre-portioned. And actually a lot of teas that I have is in this format because this way it ensures its maximum freshness and of course you wouldn't have to sort of think about how much tea you want to use per serving. So as you open the outer container, it does come in a little plastic bag like, like this. And as we went over, the first part is actually just take a look at the tea and take a sniff. I really really enjoy the smell of this particular tea. It's very light and aromatic. Next, we are just going to put this inside our infuser. With the tea leaves in, we are going to go through our first brew. So simply pour water into the pot and just let it sit there for a few seconds. So like I said, we do not drink this brew. We simply sniff it for the initial burst of aroma and of course put the lid on and we are going to dump this part out. You will pour them over the cups that we have prepared here. This way again it will bring the, the cup up to temperature and of course add some of that aroma to the cup. The rest of these we're just gonna go ahead and feed it to our pet here. 
Of course, not every set will come with a little pet, but if yours does, you'll simply feed it the tea to act as a gesture. So the second brew is the brew that we want to drink. So obviously, empty out your teacups. At this point, your tea leaves will actually be more or less volumed. Again, we are just going to introduce a bit more water. So the actual brew time will depend on your personal preference. And of course, remember to leave more brew time for black teas and a little less for white and green. Just as a point of reference, for green teas, you want to let them sit for about 30 seconds. For black teas, it could be there for anywhere from three to five minutes. For oolong, again, it ranges greatly. It could be anywhere from 30 seconds to 10 minutes, depending on the specific type of oolong tea that you have. Please note that you want to use this as a general reference guide because higher quality teas actually takes a lot shorter time to brew. As with coffee, you don't want to over extract the flavors and cover up all of the origin qualities. So after the desired amount of times, you put the filter over the tea holding pot and transfer the tea over to it. Doing so will obviously stabilize the flavor by stopping the infusion process. This will also make serving the tea easier. So next, you will go from here and pour the tea into your teacup. And now if you remember the three parts that I mentioned before, we have hit our third part of enjoying a traditional tea, which is the tasting part. And for obvious reasons, the host would normally sit where I am right now with the cups closer to the guests. So when you actually taste the tea, you want to sip the tea instead of gulping it down. Just like cupping in coffee, this will allow air to go into your mouth and mix with the aroma of the tea, which will allow you to fully appreciate the flavor of the tea. And now you'll continue to make the next brews. And if you will notice, the tea actually have broom to its full size by the third brew. So how many brews each tea leaf will take will also vary depending on the tea leaf that you're having and of course on your personal preference as well. Very often that I see with most of the teas that I have, you will usually withstand three to four brews before losing a lot of its flavors. Your experience will vary, so go ahead and test them out as you do this at home just to get a feel of the tea that you have. And another thing to mention is that the first cup that we have will taste lighter. The whole point of the first cup is to introduce your palate to the taste of the tea, so you don't want that first brew to be too bold. And because of that, the first brew to drink will typically be shorter and the subsequent brews will be longer. And that is pretty much it, guys. We very often drink tea when we are having snacks, watching TV, or just having a little chit chat. And in China, you will often find people have these tea sets set up on either the coffee table or ha they have a separate tea table set up. So this way, when guests come over, you'll invite them to sit and then you would uh, prepare some tea for them. And to me, I think it's a great icebreaker because as you're preparing them, you can talk about the tea that you are using today. And as you are enjoying a cup of tea, you can let the conversation carry to wherever it needs to go. So hopefully this episode give you a better understanding of how a traditional Chinese tea set works. What you guys are seeing here is just a small part of my tea collection. Uh, my family are very big on teas and we have a lot of tea saved up. And again, hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you are new to our channel, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, be sure to follow us on Instagram. And that is pretty much it for this episode, and I'll see you on the next one.